Now, I response video to a Fred video on objective and subjective aren't. Um, what they aren't. Um, yeah, he just, he says a lot of stuff, you know, like, this is the rules, uh, blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't really back it up with anything, um, you know, kind of logical statement. So I'll draw a picture and I'll play his video. And, um, you know, I might as well get through this rhetoric. And that's what it is, a lot of rhetoric about simple concepts. So, um, to the picture, I guess, suppose, right? I mean, oh, maybe the light will help. Um, all right, so objective would be, you know, the simplest way to look at it is, is, let's just use the checkerboard example even, right? Okay, so you got the checkerboard, or the chessboard, and then you have the pieces on the board. So here's a piece, let's just say right here. And so this piece has a subjective perspective. It sees the world from its little place in the world and from its whatever it can do it's a pawn it's a rook it's a knight it can do its certain things it just sees the world from its perspective and so that would be the subjective perspective and the objective perspective would be something out here that's viewing or modeling the entire game seeing all of the pieces and understanding much more of the game than the subject of it. So that would be a duality in the sense that one is on the outside looking in and one is on the inside sort of looking out but maybe not seeing as much if they're not um, trying to see. You know, so if they're not seeing their place in like humans have a place in the animal kingdom for example <clears throat> and some people think that place is like a dominant role um, is that the accurate perspective, or is that a human-centric perspective? Is that a, a perspective that's been influenced by a bias? So that would be another way of looking at it, is maybe a horse race, right? So you could have a track, and there's a little stuff in the middle there, right? And uh, <laughs> you know, like double asses in the middle. Yes, double asses. And then you got these stands here, you know, where people watch the little horses go roundy round. And um, so you got the horse that has a perspective. You got the guy riding the horse. Um, you know, you got the owner of the horse, right? Um, so you got the rider. You got the owner. Um, you know, and then you got a lot of other people. And they all have a horse in the race, right? They all got a horse in the race. And so, you know, for them, this means something because they're going to make some money out of it or something else. So the stands don't have the fans don't have as much of a horse in the race, but they're betting on the you know the 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 outcome. So they have a horse in the race in that sense. You know they're interested, they're rooting. So all of these people have a subjective bias in the sense that they all have a horse in the race, where somebody from the objective perspective wouldn't have a horse in the race, and they would just observe the racing and understand okay horse goes around he gets really tired but uh, he likes to run uh, the rider gets paid a fee for winning and gets more money if he wins and so he might cheat a little bit so you can understand that and you can observe different things about who's doing what and how they're doing it but this again would be the perspective where there's no horse in the race no obvious bias um, in terms of um, something that would be perverting a, a perspective, where all these people have an incentive to say, oh, real racing's really good, yeah, racing's cool, blah, 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 because they all have a financial interest in the race. So that's two ways of looking at it, where objective is always, this ends up being the superior perspective. If you can acquire an objective perspective, it's going to be the better perspective because it either doesn't include bias or it doesn't include ignorance. So this would be an ignorant perspective just from the subjective viewpoint. If the subject can't model the whole game and is just playing the game as a pawn and not realizing all the other elements in the game, um, that would be ignorance. So the two things you're fighting are ignorance and bias. And the way you solve those is by gaining objectivity. Blah, 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 blah. So that would be my contribution. Um, certainly there's other ways of using the word object and subject. But I don't think object and subject 
have much to do with the way the words objective and subjective are used. I think it is much more about perspective, narrowing of perspective, and bias, which is perversion of a perspective. So, let's play along. I'm just thinking about the terms objective and subjective, and how they figure within conversation, how we use them. Because it seems to me that these terms are bandied about quite a lot, but a lot of the time they're being used either incorrectly or as part of a sort of thinking process, conversational process, which doesn't really, um, doesn't really accord with how those words are actually working. Yeah, see, so says him, right? Um, <clears throat> so, it's part of a conversational process, right? Does that mean anything to you? Because it doesn't mean anything to me. Um, yeah, they're being used to describe um, authority. They're being used to um, point out that there's credible and less credible perspective. I think. I mean, because those, those words, objective and subjective, of course, they do have, well, they do have dictionary definitions, they have a lot of dictionary definitions, and they do have specific technical use where they have, you know, quite well-bounded and functional uses in, again, well-bounded and functional languages, you know, but, um, but in regular conversation. Well, in regular conversation. And well, I don't think people use them in regular conversation. I really don't. I think they use them in serious conversation. They're making a serious point. When you start calling something subjective, you're making a serious accusation. And uh, if you're maligning an objective perspective or saying it doesn't exist or it can't be acquired, I think that's a serious statement. Um, I guess I would add to this equation that there is always advantage to having a subjective perspective as part of the objective perspective. I, I mean, an objective perspective wouldn't be complete if it didn't wasn't capable of modeling the perspective of the subject. I mean, you obviously need to know what sentient is to be able to commentate on what it is to be sentient. So. Having a subjective perspective does inform you. Being a jockey informs you of what it is to be a jockey. Being a horse informs you of what it is to be a horse. Um, ideally, we would all have those experiences and then we could talk about everything from a completely informed perspective. But the only question is, is do you really need a completely informed perspective? And I think I would argue is you don't need a completely informed perspective. You don't need to know what it feels like to be retarded and, you know, stick your finger in your ass and then stick it in your nose. You, know, you don't need that experience to be able to opine on the subject of life and significance. And even the kind of half-informed conversation, which is typical of the kind of conversations that we engage in here, yeah, well, speak for yourself, half-informed person. Um, you know, what, <clears throat> what, 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 where do we go to get the fully informed conversation? I've heard you critique Dawkins, Dennett, um, you know, the other uh, free will atheist guy. I've heard you rag on all kinds of people. There's one or, one or two books that you might now once in a while applaud. But are you telling me there is somebody who is... Um, fully qualified to have real conversation, uh, a fully informed conversation. I mean, there's there's well PhD people, Thunderfoot, do you think he's fully informed? He's PhD, did do him any good? Not on an awful lot of subjects it didn't. Those technicalities, the technical specificities of those words, is always lost, it seems to me. Oh, the technical specificity, right. I mean, I, I don't see the point of technical specificity if you're going to use it to say the word doesn't mean what most people think it means. That just doesn't go anywhere, right? If you're going to start playing the Latin game or something, you know, let's go find that uh, Latin, in Latin it means sit on toilet um, in the upside-down position. Well, you know, who cares what the Latin is? 
the original derivation of the word is. Let's talk about how the word is realistically used and how the word is realistically useful. And I'm not saying we shouldn't perhaps have some premises, um, you know, make some stipulations before you engage in conversation about what these words mean, but, come on. Um, so anyway, I've just been thinking about some things about this, and I'll probably have to make some follow-ups to support what I'm saying here. But... Yeah, yes, a lot of follow-up, because every point you're going to make here, you don't back up with anything at all. I mean, the first thing is that the objective-subjective dichotomy is usually held up as that, you know, it's, that those two terms kind of exhaust the possibility of how knowledge or facts or information can exist. Information, knowledge, facts. Yeah, so let's concede, though, that it pretty much is. I mean, there's nothing else in this diagram, right? There's subjective perspectives as jockeys, fans, blah, 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 blah. And then there's objective who would theoretically be capable of understanding these people and their roles and their motivations and their psychology and what they're after. What else is there? There's no other necessary perspective. There's no other perspective we could qualify. There's no other way to opine. Is either you model what you understand or you live it as a subject. But you can't do anything else, can you? You can either experience it as a subject, or you can imagine it as an intellect. But you can't do anything else. It can be objective, or it can be subjective. It's a dichotomy, and it's exhaustive. That's all there is. And that isn't true. I don't think that's true at all. Um, yeah, so what's the point? <laughs> it's not true, but it gives no indication of why it's not true, in the sense of no... Nothing to hold on to, nothing to grasp here. I think there are ways of talking about facts, ideas, knowledge, information, data, which doesn't fall into the objective, uh, subjective dichotomy, which doesn't, that just doesn't work to, ex to describe. So it's, not, it's a false dichotomy. Secondly... Um, <clears throat> Well, it just occurred to me that maybe he's talking about poetics or something. Maybe he's talking about perspectives that are intended to be accurate explicitly, um, but that somehow they metaphorically will describe a circumstance. And so you could metaphor the horse race and describe it and talk about it as a cockroach race or some other kind of analogy or something, change the changed the pieces of it and so it wouldn't no longer be an explicitly objective perspective because now it's a, a metaphorically informed perspective you could argue hmm, perhaps but I mean if the elements are still the same and it's intended to metaphor or analogize the circumstance then I think it still would qualify as an objective perspective I mean, it's not, it's not an exhaustive dichotomy. It doesn't, it doesn't cover everything. Secondly, I'm not sure it's a dichotomy at all. We talk about objective and subjective as if it's a simple binary divide. That which is objective is, is separate from that which is subjective. Straightforward, different categories. There's two categories of... Excuse me. Ah! Why he's sneezing... Um, but the truth is, is the only thing that's dichotomous about them is the cred on, the, on the subject of credibility. And the obvious point to be made would be is that subjective perspectives are often biased perspective, are limited perspective. Now those would be the two faults intrinsic to subjective perspective, is either bias, personal incentives, you know, bribery of, of a kind, uh, you know, you're corrupted by the bribery, by the, in, the, the self-interest, um, or that the, the perspective is too narrow. It doesn't give you enough, you're in the maze rather than viewing the maze. And it's intrinsically less informative to be in the maze than above the maze. Oh, pardon me. Two categories of... Um of knowledge here, two categories of facts, if you like, that which is objective and that which is subjective. With all of the um, the logic that seems to flow from that, we think, you know, in, in normal categorical logic, 
that which is in one category cannot be in another category unless they're nested. We don't, we don't see these as nested. Uh, well, I don't even know where that, that doesn't make any sense either. Um, unless the two categories are by definition exclusive. But they have to be by definition exclusive. Good versus bad. Those kind of categories. Um, so that which is subjective, we think, is by definition not objective, and that which is objective is, we think, by definition not subjective, but it's not by definition. Well, <clears throat> I think by definition it would have to have knowledge of subjective perspectives. It would have to be informed by subjective experience, likely. I mean, theoretically, I suppose you can have an intelligence that's informed through some other process, but usually the way you become informed is through experience, subjective experience. There isn't any definition which, well, none of the definitions that we use within vernacular speech, at least, would imply that, really. So they're not really um, categorically distinct in that way. They're not part of a binary. Okay, so it's not exhaustive, they're not part of a binary or a false dichotomy. Alright, so he's saying they're not exhaustive, which means they don't pretty much complete the information cycle. Well, I think they do. Um, you know, and the, the, the dichotomy exists in terms of credibility, and I think it's really hard to argue that objective perspectives um, aren't um, superior if they have any kind of um, credibility in terms of being well informed. And the last thing is that they're, they're not opposites. Um, we often treat them as if they are opposites. As if the, um, I mean, there's more to be... Well, I don't think that happens, but whatever. I don't even know how they could possibly be opposite. I, I mean, their, <laughs> their, their relationship just doesn't provide for an oppositeness. It's just that they are fundamentally different. I mean, it's not opposite. Being in the maze and being above the maze are not opposite positions. They're just very different positions. You said about this, because in some ways they, are, they can be treated as opposite. For the most part, they're not. We treat the objective as somehow out there, and that is object, I beg your pardon, that is opposite to the subject that was in here. So we do set these things up as kind of embodied op um, oppositions, the objective and the subjective. And they're, you know, uh, not just opposite, but often in competition with one another, we see them as being. <clears throat> yeah, well, like I said, I don't think it's much of a competition. The objective perspective is, on both counts, quite superior. It's above the, the bigotries and the biases of subjective self-interest, technically. If it's, like, again, it's, it depends. You can't just declare something an objective perspective. You can't just walk out and say, I have an objective perspective if you don't have an informed perspective. So it's the obligation of the objective perspective to be awfully well informed about an awful lot of elements of, the, of its perspective. No point in being above the maze if you're wearing sunglasses and not looking at how the maze works and, and not gaining any information. Well, a, a competition for precedence. But again, that's... That's nothing to do with the, the terms objective and subjective, or, the, or how they might be used technically. Okay, so those are the three things I'm thinking about. Objective, subjective, they're not exhaustive terms, they don't cover the whole... Well, again, you should throw in the other objective, subjective, blank... divisive, blank ...world of knowledge. They're not a true dichotomy in the sense that the objective is a separate category of knowledge to the subjective. Well, it's a very distinctly different category of knowledge. So again, <laughs> for the reasons I've pointed, the two big reasons, bias and information, uh, and level of inform uh, and extent of knowledge. And they're not opposites at terminal ends of some kind of um, evaluative system for gauging knowledge with the objective. Well, gauging, see, this is where you're going to play the game. So there is a dichotomy based on the credibility of the knowledge. If you have a fully informed objective perspective, it's way over here.
a subjective perspective is by definition limited and bias and so it's going to be on the other side of the scale by definition it's not subjective if it contains objective knowledge so if you can gain objective knowledge from a subjective point of view I just don't see that as rational so by its very definition it's limited and bias an objective is theoretically unlimited and contains no bias I mean, that's a pretty strong dichotomy on credibility. Being distanced in the subjective, being proximal. Okay. So anyway, I think I've made the point and such. So, until next time, and such.